you know, if they're bringing little of themselves into the process, then the character really starts to come alive. And, you know, and we've been really fortunate. Guys like Sheen and Cryer can do everything. So, I mean, you know, they're a whole orchestra in and of themselves, so it's fun. I mean, you can, you know, it doesn't really, you can ask them, to, you know, to fall down the flight of stairs or do a poignant scene or do something very, you know, very sardonic, and you get it all. I mean, they can do everything. So. I had 10 episodes at a time that the CW and UP and merged. A lot of affiliates were left without programming, so they wanted something. And I had just finished the 10 episodes, so the timing was perfect. And then here comes TBS, you know, being just as crazy as I was to do the 10 and say, okay, we'll take 100. So it's been a fantastic uh, relationship with Detmar Mercury and with William Morris and with uh, TBS, and I'm really excited that the show is doing so well and continues to do so well. As the marketplace evolves and as technology um, you know, gets adapted, you're seeing more and more um, requirements on us at NBC Universal to provide our clients, the advertisers, with more marketing platforms and not just media buying opportunities. In order for a brand to stay strong, and in order for Disney to stay strong, we have to know what's going on with our audience. We have to be as connected as they are to their best friend. We have to be a part of their lives. We have to know what their lives are about. We have to know what they're thinking about, what technology they're using, what characters they love. Taking on financial partners is only one way that uh, companies and we, uh, frankly, mitigate risk. Um, there are a lot of other ways. It's keeping your production costs down. It's keeping a discipline throughout all of your your businesses. It's keeping your overhead low. Ours is less than 9% of, of uh, revenue. Um, it's uh, taking partners when it's right to take a partner, um, but not always. Uh, frankly, it's picking uh, projects that you think really have uh, a specific audience that you know how to reach and, and to reach them efficiently through marketing that's very focused. So the question as to whether or not that hope will turn into a reality for the television industry in terms of really getting ahead of this issue and being able to manage it so that television can continue to have its place as the most effective advertising medium out there will depend with what kind of urgency the television industry, all aspects of the industry, come to attack this problem, which means embracing the kinds of ad solutions that will work in an environment where viewers decide to watch television differently. The whole notion of branded entertainment or sponsorship in some ways is a throwback to PBS in the, uh, in the 50s, 60s, 70s when uh, the, the news hour would begin as a branded message or branded entertainment presented to you by, and it's taking a page from that. International broadcasters are actually very, very savvy uh, and understand the American market very well. So, uh, you know, some projects lend themselves better than others, but also it's become a lot easier because there's, there, it, it, it became a, a much more global television community. So even the projects that are created in the U.S. or, or written in the U.S., you know, a lot of them have, have relevance and, and, and are interesting to international buyers for co-productions as well. We are going in some trying times, as I like to see a lot of the um, digital vendors maybe putting a lot more effort into the measurement of it to really maybe um, kind of get the dollars a little bit more accountable and advertisers to feel where the ROI is really coming from. I think that's the goal right now is, you know, getting more ROI measurement out of this space, and then I think the dollars will come in droves. We're looking at, at a lot of interesting initiatives where we're looking at the whole regional channel space uh, right now in a lot of different markets, and we've got a couple of, uh, of opportunities that we're pursuing there. So we're just sort of scanning the market and looking for the, the next opportunity. The next chapter of A&E, of course, which began this year, is to add to our portfolio our own original scripted programming at the highest level that we possibly can. I think the online platform is great. I think that um, it's a place to experiment um, with shows that we might want to want to try, you know, to play around with. I think it's uh, potentially um, a place that you can find um, ideas 